Hello, hi there, happy Friday. Welcome to March 10th. Today's video is going to be a little bit more low key coming off of such heavy hitters lately. I've had some very, very deep and very strong messages lately here on YouTube. So it feels really good to just come here a little laid back, uh, not so much with the coaching lens and just chat with you guys. And I will share that every time I do a chat video, I get a lot of views. So thank you for that. Well, depending on what time you watch this video, I could potentially be in surgery because when this video publishes at 8 a.m. Eastern time, I should be in surgery. I'm not quite sure because I filmed this day a few days ago and at the that time I hadn't received, I haven't received my call yet with my pre-op. I've got my pre-op instructions. In fact, I have them right here, uh, but I haven't gotten the call on what my surgery time is going to be. All I know is my surgeon shared with me that my surgery was going to be his most uh, invasive or his most difficult and longest one of the day. So I would be his very first surgery. And I'm sure you're very curious as to what I am getting done. If you know me well, you know that I am an open book and I share everything that I do with all of you, whether it's cosmetic or it's not. And today's surgery is not cosmetic. Um, well, I don't know. Have I had surgeries that have been cosmetic? I don't know. Well, anyway, I've shared everything with you that I've done. Um, but I always share after the fact. And there's a reason for that because when you share what you are doing with others prior Everyone has a story, right? Everyone has a story. Everyone tells you about their either positive or unfortunate procedure or situation. And often you're not even asking, but it's just, it, it, most people believe if you share, that's an invitation for them to chime in with their thoughts, their opinions, their advice. They're gonna tell you how it is. And because I'm not open to that and I would let someone know if I were open to it, I just always choose to share after the fact because then what can people say? No one can try to talk you out of something after the fact. And I've shared many times, people mean well, people mean well. It's just, again, it's identifying, is it an invitation or is someone just simply sharing? So I know you're curious. And I will tell you in a few minutes of what I am having done um, because these are procedures that most people don't talk about. Uh, most women don't talk about them, but because I am that person that does and I'm happy to so I can help others or maybe give others hope. I will share with you that I'm in a really good place. I have not had any anxiety or been nervous about having this surgery performed. And if you know me well, uh, that's not surprising either. I'm not really one to rent real estate to the negative. Um, I'm just hopeful that the surgery turns out to be successful. Uh, it may, it may not. And we won't know, but it is a surgery I decided to do. I did plenty of my homework and research, and I've done plenty of trying other measures to identify that this really, you know, was the next step for me, and, I, and I'm in a good place about it. I will give you a little history before I share with you what I'm having done today. Uh, and again, if you followed me for the long haul, this is not new information. First of all, I've had five pregnancies. Uh, every one of those babies, my daughters, were born vaginally. Um, so I, for lack of better words, been through the ringer. <laughs> been through the ringer. <laughs> As a result of multiple pregnancies, over time, I started to have issues with leakage, urine leakage, incontinence uh, is, is, is the term for it. 
and it's so easy to think that it's your bladder, right? I have a bad bladder. Well, believe it or not, I actually have a great bladder. I've been through, well, they're gonna be testing it a little bit more in surgery, I believe, but uh, the test that I did leading up to the surgeon determining what all we were going to do in surgery, one of the tests that I had was on my bladder and I passed. So it's just funny how you get really educated along the lines. I don't remember exactly when this happened. My youngest is 17 and I would say probably a few years after she was born. I really don't know. It's just it, because everything happened gradually. At some point, I started leaking. And I am, I wouldn't say I'm a runner, although there was a season where I was a runner because I trained for a half marathon and then ran that half marathon. And I know the year that I ran that, I was already having to have some type of protection for my leakage. So maybe if I can find it, I'll put the year in. By then I was already leaking, and, but it wasn't really bad. So it just, it gradually got worse over time. And the last few years, it's been really bad. I know my body and how much leakage I'm going to have according to what I'm doing exercise. So if I am out running and doing, doing a run for exercise at all, whether it's on a treadmill or outside, I have to wear an adult diaper and I also have to wear these little inserts. They're like a little insert. They come, they look like a tampon. It expands and it's supposed to prevent leakage. But I actually have to use both. And by the time I am done, the diaper is full. So you, if you follow me, you know that Paul and I do four Orange Theory workout classes per month, which I'm thinking about canceling our membership and it's not because of Orange Theory. It's really just because there's reasons it's not serving me and I'll get more into that maybe on Instagram stories or in a future video of, of my decision to step back from that. But when we get done with an Orange Theory class, well, first of all, the goal is always that I end on the treadmills because there's three there's three blocks basically to an Orange Theory workout. And I want my third block to be the treadmill because that's when I'm going to be jogging and I am going to fill that diaper up and it is completely full. And this is a group exercise class. So it's not fun to have this big leaky diaper that while it held everything in, it's not attractive looking underneath of your, your workout leggings. I'm so used to it, it doesn't even bother me. And I do pretty much all my workouts at home. As you know, I work out very aggressively. Um, there's lots of jumping, a lot of plyometrics. I incorporate a little bit of jogging. You know, again, the jumping motion. So I've identified what workouts require just the diaper and what, re what workouts require having that, that poise insert in as well. So having double up. So this is a real issue and I have tried other modalities to correct it. I did a procedure or treatment, I guess you could call it, called Mcella, which is like a chair that you sit on. And many of you probably recall me trying that modality. And I went through quite a few treatments and had really no success whatsoever. I did find out later on working with a posture coach that I actually wasn't sitting on the machine correctly to where it would hit the pelvic floor, which is exactly what it was supposed to be treating. So who knows, but at the end of the day, I, I believe that my severity called for a, 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 a a bigger measure, right? Something that's that's going to, I, I think the Amcella can be great for someone with a mild condition, but I have an extreme case. So that's why we can't, we can't put everyone in the same box. And this is also why I don't share my situation with people until after the fact, because most people will chime in and say, oh yeah, I'm the same way if I sneeze, if I laugh, if I cough. Yeah, I, I know all that, that's stress incontinence, and I have a little bit of that, but I don't even really have that so bad. I mean, I do, but not, I, mine is so much more 
prominent. And most people, most women that suffer from stress incontinence, they aren't exercising vigorously. They don't do the training program that I do. They maybe get physical activity, but they don't get exercise and there is a difference. And if you work with me, you definitely know the difference between physical activity and exercise. Most people my age, they get physical activity maybe, but they're not actually exercising. They're not actually training and working out. So my situation is so different and that's why I don't I don't want to jump into anyone's box or be in, put in the same box as someone else. That being said, from there we went to physical therapy. And I can't say physical therapy wouldn't have potentially worked. I don't believe it would because again, my case is so severe. But I could tell that I wasn't someone who was probably going to put in all of the homework with physical therapy and go to physical therapy as much as would, would have been required to help me. So I believe in physical therapy. I don't know if, it, if I could have had wonderful results. I didn't, but I, but I take full responsibility for a portion of that. But I, again, I believe my case is so extreme um, that I don't think physical therapy would have been enough, uh, maybe in tandem with a surgery. So from there, I decided it's time to go see a specialist and I was very thankful that I did. I went to a specialist in the fall of last year, so 2022, and been through some tests, a couple of different appointments with the surgeon, um, I've had plenty of time to process what our next steps are. Um, the surgeon has had other people come in and give their opinion, and we decided that we would go for it with the surgery. So I am having three procedures or surgeries done today, or one surgery with three procedures. And again, this is not my bladder. My bladder was working fine. My pelvic floor is compromised. But we are doing a TVT sling, which TVT sling stands for tension-free vaginal tape is what comes up. A minimally invasive operation requiring three small incisions to insert and position the tape. Um, we'll see. We'll see. He has high hopes, uh, even though he knows the program that I do for training, because that was my concern. He really believes that it will be successful. Uh, but how do we know, right? How do we know? So I'm in a good place with that, because if I didn't do the surgery, I would never know. And if the surgery is not successful, we will look into other measures. We will look into other measures. The second surgery I am having, which I think is just a scope, cystoscopy, cyst, I believe that's, I'm pronouncing it right, a cystoscopy, a procedure to look inside the bladder using a thin camera called a cystoscope. Again, I believe that's what I'm having. He just has cysto down, <laughs> that's it. So I believe that that's what it is. The tube that carries pee out of the body, so that your urethra. So a, cystos, a cystoscope is inserted into the urethra, the tube that carries pee out of the body and passed into the bladder to allow a doctor or nurse to see inside. So that's all I have for you. Because again, I'm in surgery as you are watching this. Or I could be done if you're watching it later. Oh, what is this though? Oh my, there's another thing. <laughs> Hold on, maybe I'm having four things done. No, I think this is, <laughs> you'd think, you'd think I'd be a little bit more prepared. Okay, yeah, this is, it's just, this is the term for it. The more, the most invasive surgery that I'm having, which typically is not outpatient, but because I am in such great health and staying in a hospital or even being in a hospital really isn't in my best interest with being so healthy, my surgeon really wanted to avoid that. And he said, I can tell that you are the type of person that takes great care of yourself. Clearly you are in optimal health. You're gonna be better off going home. So we're gonna do this outpatient as well with 
knowing I'm going to come home with a catheter and maybe for a couple of days. I mean, that's often why most people would stay in the hospital for a day or two. Again, I filmed this before actually knowing. So I would say the best thing to do after watching this video is to be watching Instagram stories and I'll give you updates there. But I am having a recto seal repair. Now this is being done transvaginally, so it's not through the rectum. Um, it's, it's done through the vagina. And I'm gonna give you two images to show you the difference between how your rectum should be designed and how mine is designed. And again, this is a result of multiple pregnancies. Basically, the rectum is shaped where it's bulging into the vagina. Yeah, the vaginal wall. Now, mine, you couldn't see this. Uh, this is, wasn't something that I was really even aware of, but when he asked me a couple of questions, I'm like, yes. One of the things that he asked me was, when you have to, when you, when you're having a bowel movement, do you need to like take some toilet paper, wrap it around your fingers and, and push up into your vagina and, and push so that you you can have a bowel movement? Yeah. Yeah. You hit the nail on the head. And he said, that's because your rectum is actually coming into your, your, your vaginal wall. And it's, it's, I didn't realize how common this is. Um, so basically, you can have that repaired. You can have your you have a recto seal, and you can have it repaired where now the rectum is where it should go, and hopefully it's successful. Um, again, we really don't know. We really don't know, but we've we talked about it and decided yes, let's go for it and. Um, so basically, yeah, posterior, posterior, copor, copor, por, <laughs> I'll put it in here, is performed through the vagina by making an incision in the posterior wall of the vagina in order to identify the weakness in the fibromuscular layer. So those are the three uh, procedures that I'm having in surgery today. I will have some downtime. Not really sure how long that will be. Uh, I, when, when we scheduled my surgery, I told him that I have a wedding that I'm invited to next Saturday on March 18th. And I said, do you think, and he interrupted me and he said, you'll be perfectly fine to go. You'll be perfectly fine to go. That's just how he said it. So that tells me that, you know, I'm probably going to be down for the weekend, especially coming home with a catheter. Um, but I will be able to be up and moving hopefully next week. I just will have exercise restrictions. I am sure I will be back to some physical activity soon because uh, physical activity is very important to post-surgery care. But again, most people don't know the difference between physical activity and exercise. Exercise could be, I'm, I believe, four to six weeks, and I'm going to celebrate that win <laughs> because you already know how much I hate exercise. Um, but as soon as he is, instructs me to get some physical activity, I'm all about healing. I'm all about what the best practices are to heal and make this a success. So if he says, I want you moving around the house and get out of bed, I'm gonna be doing that. You better believe I'm just gonna follow all protocols to help encourage this to be a success. So that's where I'm at. Very happy to share. Again, I highly recommend you be watching Instagram stories over the next, next couple of days and I'll keep you posted on what I know at that time. Um, I've been working on what my diet is going to look like. My biggest concern with having downtime is muscle atrophy. I, I work really hard at my strength training and weight resistance training routine. I have very great muscle tone. I have a lot of muscle on my body. And so my concern is what can I do in the four to six weeks if I am avoiding exercise to not lose muscle atrophy. And I already know just from my education and health and wellness and personal training, 
um, how to coach other cl clients on this. So I really just took the same steps of my knowledge. There's supplements that can help to preserve your muscle. Um, keeping a very high protein diet is imperative. So I really just plan on making sure that my nutrition and drinking a lot of water, really essentially what I always do is what I will continue to do and modify my calories a little bit, but you have to be really careful with that because if you calorie restrict, you're gonna have muscle atrophy. So I, I'm going into the surgery in a great place. I'm in optimal health. I've been working really hard since the beginning of the year preparing for this. So I feel really good and I, and I know out on the other side, you know, I'm, it's just gonna be stronger and better, right? So. Thought I would share that with you today and how um, how this journey has looked for me and how I'm just happy to be here and where, where I'm at. Again, in a, I'm just in a good place and I'm just hopeful. I'm just hopeful. There's no no reason to get the, the cart or to get the cart in front of the horse, right? There's no reason to do that. So many people do, and I I know better than to do that. I don't have the outcome, and I just have faith. I trust the Lord, and whatever He has in store for me, it will show up as it always does. So thought I would share, and I'm so happy to have you here. I do want to share with you that I will be doing a quarterly Q and A video. And because quarter one is coming to an end very soon at the end of March, I will be taking your questions for that Q&A. Those questions will be taken on Instagram stories next week on Tuesday the 14th. So on Tuesday the 14th, I will have a box on my Instagram stories where you can submit a question, whatever question you have for me regarding any topic, not talking about the surgery, just anything that you have a question on. It could be about me. Uh, just remember this is a question, it's not coaching. If you want to work with me as your coach, you know where to get registered or signed up and, and select your package. So this is not an area for me to troubleshoot something for you, but really just a question that you may have for me or a question that many people would benefit from. I always look for reoccurring questions or a pattern of questions, um, but that video will be filmed on Wednesday the 22nd, and it sh it's scheduled to publish on the last day of the quarter, the last day of the month, March 31st. So again, be following me these next few days on Instagram stories, and don't forget, next Tuesday the 14th is when I will be taking your questions for that Q&A. In the description box below, as always, I will have outfit and beauty details. I will also have a library of my recent videos that have really had some really hot topics and real strong messages. And uh, my Tip Tuesdays have been really great. And yeah, yeah, so check it all out. Well, thanks for being here and I will see you next or you'll see me next on Instagram stories sharing something and then I will be back next Tuesday here on YouTube as well with Tip Tuesday. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thanks for being here and thanks for all of your support and just encouragement that you all give me on a daily basis. All right. Take care.